Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the ColourPop Flutter by Collection. I actually have the whole collection today to review for you guys because ColourPop was so kind enough to send the whole collection my way. However, that will never sway or change my opinion. I just wanted to let you guys know that they did send this collection over to me. I didn't purchase anything with my own money. I just wanted to be transparent with you guys, but I have the whole collection. I will be reviewing everything. I'm going to be talking about everything. My thoughts on the shades, everything like that. We do have like a whole new product slash formula in this collection as well, which is always super, super exciting to see ColourPop releasing new things. But yeah, it's going to be the same old rundown. I have my review, my swatches, comparisons, and then my three looks at the end. So if you guys are interested in all of that, then just continue watching. All right, so for this review, we're just gonna kind of break down everything into its own category, talk about everything one by one, just so it's a little bit easier to take in because it is is a bigger collection so the first thing we should talk about is obviously the eyeshadow palette so this is the flutter by eyeshadow palette and this is 18 us dollars there is a press glitter in here as well just one but i know that is a really big concern and i feel like i'm getting a little bit more aware of it now and i know a lot of you guys are more put off to buying a palette because of a press glitter so there is a press glitter in here just to let you guys know so my first impressions on this palette and this whole collection i I first thought that this was just such a beautiful collection like everything was just so pretty and the tones everything about it I just loved and when I saw this palette online I had a feeling that I was going to like it just because I was looking at the shade range I was like you know there's a lot of transitions a lot of medium tones a lot of dark tones then after playing around this palette I actually really really enjoyed playing around with this palette and I think I know why this palette reminds me of the sweet talk and also give it to me straight and sweet talk and give it to me straight are like two of my favorite palettes from ColourPop. So when it's kind of taking a little bit of give it to me straight, a little bit of sweet talk, you kind of get Flutter by as the baby. So from this palette, from the mattes, it kind of reminds me of the give it to me straight and then the layout and the shade range, like how you get your light, your mediums, your darks, and your metallics, it kind of reminds me of the sweet talk palette. The sweet talk palette is a really well-rounded palette and that's how I feel about the Flutter by. So I feel like if you did like the sweet talk palette but it was a little bit too coral a little bit too pink you wanted something a little bit more purple I think this is like the purple sister of sweet talk I think sweet talk has two press glitters this one has one so that's a little bit better I typically do lean more towards like pinky and peachy coral shades I don't typically play around too much with purples but if I do need a palette where I can get that like moody purple this is a palette that I will go to another aspect of this palette that reminds me of give it to me straight is that there's a lot of like these more cool tone purples but then you also have a lot of these warm tones as well so I like the diversity in this palette so all around I think it's a really really amazing palette honestly I think the shades are pretty unique in my opinion I think at first glance this palette doesn't look that exciting or unique but after playing around with it I actually do find it quite unique and I don't have a palette that has all of these shadows in one place so definitely probably in like my top 10 favorite color pop palettes maybe top 10 I don't know has so many palettes that it's hard to do a top 10 but it's really high up there I really really enjoy this palette and I feel like you guys will like it too you can create very natural looks to very glam dark smoky cut creases just everything you could create any look with this palette I feel like you have a bit of everything in this palette to do so I think the only con with this is obviously the press glitter which will be a con to a lot of you guys I feel and for the next product I thought we could talk about the new product from Colourpop this is their new pixie puff highlighter and it is 16 us dollars so it is pretty much just like a body highlighter like a loose body highlighter it comes with a little puff that's super super cute and then you get the product in here so it's a loose powder it kind of looks like they're loose highlighters but in like a bigger tub and you pretty much just take some and put it on you for 16 dollars i don't know how i feel about it and if i would recommend it to you guys the product is nice I think the loose glitter, the little puff, the concept is very cute. Uh, I don't know, these puffs really remind me of like, I don't know, the 90s or 80s or whenever these were in makeup and beauty, but it kind of gives me like old school vibes. So I really love that. For what it is, it doesn't really show up on your skin. I use it directly onto my dry skin. I didn't put lotion on so that it could like stick to my skin, but it's a very, very fine glitter. So you get like a little sheen to your skin. You can see it up close, but from far away, you definitely can't 
can't see it like I'm not gonna get like a good body glow when I hit the light from far away but from close up you can definitely see it I did use it on my dry skin I would imagine that if you put it on top of lotion or on top of a body oil it would enhance that even more so that is great I just don't know for 16 US dollars if it's worth it I know Colourpop's not a very like luxe luxe brand for something that seems so luxurious like a body puff like for a body highlighter it just seems so like a luxury extra thing to do that I don't know when you're holding it you just want to feel a bit luxurious it is made out of paper so it feels very I don't know I'm not gonna say cheap because it's not like it's gonna break down on you or just collapse or whatever but it just does feel a little bit like fragile for me I personally could have like done it without this I think it is more of like a novelty thing it's like a very cute thing to have I mean if you don't like these sole body oils because it's an oil and it just feels very sticky then this is probably a better option for you where you can get that little glimmer shimmer and it's like dry but I just I don't know if I can really recommend it to you guys it's not a product that I'm like wowed away by but I mean I have it I'll get my use out of it I feel like I will use this on top of the soul shimmering body oils I think it's just so subtle that I don't know if it's really worth $16 but if you're into like more of a subtle shimmer on your body then this would be a really great product for you I next want to talk about the Lux lipsticks so these are all $7.50 US dollars each or you can get it in a bundle for $34 US dollars for all five new shades so these new five shades are in in the Velvet Blur formula. I don't want to talk too much about the Lux lipsticks because I feel like you guys know how I feel about it. But if any of you guys are new here, I really do enjoy the Lux lipsticks. It is a really, really great formula and they have three formulas. So they have the cream, the matte, and the Velvet Blurs. I would say my favorite formula is probably the cream and then the Velvet Blurs and then the matte. The Velvet Blur is kind of like an in-between between the cream and the matte. Not talking about the formula, but the bullet-wise, it is a little bit different from what I have seen from ColourPop. So these don't have the star imprint on them and also the shape of the component is very different as well it's a lot more pointy so it's actually a lot easier to apply and get precision with the application all the shades are very pretty but if we're just speaking in this collection the shade range did seem a little bit weird to me I feel like a lot of the shades were very pinky and more warmer I really like being monochromatic so when I was doing more of like a purple eye I wanted something that was a little bit more of a cool tone pink or purple and I feel like with the Lux lipsticks, I didn't really have that. I feel like all five shades didn't really match too well with the eye looks but that's just speaking in this collection alone if you're just speaking about the Lux lipsticks as it is I think these are really really pretty shades they're not like my ride or die go-to shades but a lot of these shades are very wearable and I can see myself wearing often they're like very muted kind of lipstick shades and super pretty I love all of them they definitely have that like rosy dusty tone to them I think my favorite one would have to be bloom to bloom and Virgo moon I feel like these these two are probably the ones that I would wear a lot. I think with the Luxe lipsticks, it's a great formula. I think it really depends on what kind of shades you like to see on yourself. That's my thoughts on the Luxe lipsticks. The next products in this collection are the Super Shock Shadows. There are four shades and they are six US dollars each. I think, again, very pretty shades, but for me personally, I don't typically use a lot of Super Shock Shadows. They're just not like my go-to formula. I feel like when I'm creating an eye look, I just like to stick to a palette, use that, and I'm good to I don't like dipping into so many products and like making my vanity table very messy so I typically don't reach for the super shock shadows but I mean I'll swatch them for you so you guys can see how they look and the last two products in this collection are the two jelly mud shadows these are eight US dollars each again I only got to use one out of the two I used buttercup within my three looks as a inner corner highlight it was very very pretty for the jelly mud shadows they're not Colourpop's like best products but they are still great products I think the downside of these is that it does does dry out really quickly look at the swatches see how you feel I feel like out of the two that's here I probably would use buttercup more because it is more of like a highlighting shade so you could use it to highlight your inner corners they work great as eyeshadows on its own or as a base to really enhance another metallic shadow or glitters there's just so many different ways of how you can use jelly mud shadows I do have a whole review on it so if you want to see that I'll leave it in a link somewhere here for you so that guys is pretty much my review on the flutter by color 
collection. If you want my recommendations, I would definitely say the Flutter By palette. This one is definitely a standout palette in my opinion from Colourpop. This won't be a palette that I keep in my top drawer just because I don't really gravitate towards more purple shadows for like my everyday wear. But when I want to create more purple looks, this is a palette that I will go to. I feel like It's My Pleasure is a really great palette, but it's not so everyday. I feel like this is more of like an everyday approach to like a purple eye look. So I like it for that. And then probably the two luxe lipsticks in the shade Virgo Moon and Bloom to Bloom would have to be my next recommendations. These are the shades that I just gravitate towards and the shades I probably would use the most, if you know what I mean. These would just pair really well with any eye look and they just look great against my skin tone. But for the lipstick, Obviously, it just comes down to personal preference because these are my tones. You might like other shades, but those are my recommendations. So yeah, I hope you guys found all of that helpful. We can now move on to the swatches, the comparisons, and then the three looks. So jumping straight into the first look, I'm going to be taking the shade Made to Last and this is going to be our all over transition kind of shade. I'm going to first pack that onto my lid space first just to get that pigmentation there and then I'll like blend that up towards my crease area. Typically I do just go straight into the crease with my transition shadows but I want the shadow to be all over our eyes and kind of like the base for everything. So that's just going to go all over our lids as well as our crease area. Next, I am taking the shade Mary Posa, and I'm going to work this right at the outer third of my eyes. I'm just going to use circular motions just to kind of deepen up that outer third and make it a little bit more darker. I'm not going to bring that in towards the inner third of my eyes. I want to keep that area blank. I don't want to add any like dark shadows at the inner third, just mainly focusing this at the outer third of my eyes. And then I will take the shade Float On and I'm going to start using this shadow to create my wing. So I'm just going to line my lash line like how I normally would with the gel liner, liquid liner, but using this shadow instead. And then I will create a very dramatic wing. I really bring this out to like a cat eye shape. And then once I have like the solid wing down, I will take a pencil brush and start connecting the outer tip of the wing towards my crease, like where my crease falls. I'm going to connect connect it kind of into a, like a sideways triangle if that makes any sense I feel like it's easier to like see what I'm doing than me trying to like explain it But then I will take the shade Lush and I'm going to apply that at the inner third of my eyes. So this is going to help contrast the cat eye shape and really enhance it because when a light and dark color is next to each other, the contrast is like very harsh in a way. So adding this into the inner third is really going to give us that cat eye effect. 
I did take my liquid liner and I very very thinly lined my lash line and I also just did like the line at my wing I didn't create the full wing um, I just did this so that way my lash line could appear a bit darker that way when I put my false lashes on it will blend in a little bit easier so I do blend out that liquid liner very slightly you honestly could go in with just like a black eyeshadow or you could leave it but I just felt like it was necessary just to line it slightly I'm going back into the shade Mary Posa and I'm going to use this on my lower lash line. I'm just gonna sweep that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. And then with Flow On, I'm really gonna press this up against my bottom waterline and making sure at the outer corner you are connecting the wings together. That way this look can look a little bit more cohesive and it's not like two separate eye looks and everything is just connected. And to finish off this eye look, I took the Jelly Much eyeshadow in the shade Buttercup and I used this to highlight my inner corners. I honestly think this is such a pretty inner corner highlight. It's super pretty and it just suits the mood of like this kind of purpley eye look. Alright you guys, so this is the first look completed for my lashes. I am of course wearing the House of Lashes Iconic Lights. These are just my go-to lashes anytime I do like kind of a uh, cat-eyed eye look. But for my lip color, it's a little bit tricky. I mix a lot of shades. So I first applied Bloom to Bloom and then I applied Virgo Moon and then I applied Slow Dance on top of that. So pretty much it is just Slow Dance on top but it does have Virgo Moon and Bloom to Bloom underneath that and that's how I achieved my lip color. But yeah, that is the first look completed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just a very dramatic eye look from me. I love it. You guys know how much I love my wing eyeliner. So when a wing eyeliner is even more dramatic I love it even more so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this first look As for the second look, I am starting off with the shade Ch Ch Changes and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm first going to work that into my crease but I'm working it quite low into my crease almost around the lid area because the shade is a little bit dark to be like the initial transition shadow. So I'm just working it quite low and then I'll blend it up towards my crease and brow bone area. It does blend out very nicely so you won't have a problem with that but because it's a little bit darker you just want to be a little bit more careful with it. I'm also taking this shade onto my lower lash line as well, just sweeping that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. At the outer corner you can see I am connecting those shadows at the outer edge. I am then moving on to the shade Angel BB and this is going at the outer third of my eyes. I'm just going to use circular motions to really pack that color on there and really get that intensity to build up. I also take this shade onto my lower lash line as well but this time I'm taking more of a defining brush to really press this up against my bottom waterline. Now I am taking the shade Float On. I am pretty much doing exactly the same thing that I did with Angel BB, but I am using more of a smaller fluffy brush to really pinpoint and focus that right at the outer third of my eyes. And again, repeating everything, we are also taking this on to our lower lash line as well. But for this shade, I am mainly just focusing it at the outer third of my lower lash and really connecting the shadows at that point. Thank you. 
And then I am taking the shade Getaway and I will be using this shadow wit. I'm gonna place that right at the inner third of my lid space. I want the shadow to look pretty diffused, so when you are blending it up towards the crease area, you kind of just want to diffuse everything out. And now I am taking the shade Just Imagine and I'm gonna use this to highlight my inner corners and also my brow bone. Taking my liquid liner, I'm going to use this to line my lash line and then I'll go back into the shade Float On and I'm going to use this to just smoke out that outer edge to really blend that in towards the dark outer corner. I think a wing would still look good with this eye look but I feel like I always do wings so I wanted to do something a little bit different. I then just take my Artisy In Modester Eyeliner in the shade Coffee and I'm going to use this to tightline my bottom waterline. And this, guys, is the second look completed. For my lashes, I am wearing the Boudoir Lights from House of Lashes. And for my final lip pairing, I went with the Luxe Lipstick shade in Virgo Moon. I hope you guys enjoyed this second look. It is a very simple eye look to create, honestly. Very minimal, simple steps. We don't have a wing in this eye look either. But I love how simple the technique is. The outcome of it is super glam. And you guys know me, I love a good glam. So I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this second look. And now for my final look, I'm going to be starting off with the shade Wild Wing and this is going to be kind of my transition shadow as well as like my base color. So I am working that onto my lid as well as into my crease. Next, I will be taking the shade Mary Posa and I'm going to run this all over my lower lash line just to get a good wash of this color on the lower lash. I will then move into the shade Angel BB and I'm going to use this to define my bottom lash line. Now I'm going to take the shade Gotta Fly and I'm going to work this at the outer third of my eyes. I know this is a metallic shadow and it's really random for me to be playing with this like it's a matte. But I'm going to press the shadow at the outer third because this is the darkest. I want the outer corners to be a bit darker. I do go in with a blending brush to really blend out those harsh edges and make it look more diffused. And then I'm going into the Super Shock Shadow in the shade Flying Circus. I'm just going to use my ring finger and dab that right next to Gotta Fly at the center of my eyes. And then I am taking the shade Sun Flare and I'm going to put that next to the Super Shock Shadow more towards the inner third of my eyes and also into my inner corners as well to highlight that area. And you kind of just want to go back and forth with these three metallic shadows. That way they can just seamlessly blend in towards each other. It's very easy to blend metallics into each other so you won't have an issue doing that. Um, but this is kind of going to be the underbase for the butterfly wing that we're going to create. Now comes the tricky part. I am taking my liquid liner. I am first going to line my lash line just like how I normally would. And then I'm kind of creating a wing but more of like a circular wing. And this is going to be one of the butterfly patterns. And I think this is the fun part about this look is that you can create your kind of butterfly wing. You don't have to create it more into this cat eye shape. I have done a look like this in the past which I'll link somewhere here for you so you can check that out. It does look 
look a little bit different. The first time I did this a couple years ago, it was more circular, it wasn't as sharp. So I think you can just kind of play around with it. You can use an eyeshadow to map it out first if that's easier for you. But this is kind of the shape that I went with. It's honestly really hard to explain what I did. So I'm just going to let you guys watch and really see how I created the wing. And then once you have the kind of outline of the butterfly wing laid out, I'm going to take these little gemstones and stick it at the outer corners of the wing. But I just thought adding gemstones would add something special to this look. I also take my ColourPop BFF liquid liner in the shade Graceland and I'm just going to use this to kind of create little dots around the gemstones and around the butterfly wing. You can add as many or as little little white dots if you want. It's really up to to you and how intense you want this butterfly wing to be. I then took my Artisy in Modester eyeliner to tightline my entire bottom waterline. And lastly, to complete the look off, I took the shade Overpacked, which is the pressed glitter in the palette, and I mainly put that at the inner third of my eyes and into the inner corners of my eyes as well to really bring this butterfly look together. And I think it really matches like the whole packaging of this collection. There's a lot of glitter everywhere, so I thought I would just add a bit of glitter towards the inner third of my eyes. Alright you guys, so this is the final look completed for my lashes today. I am wearing the Petite Cosmetics Luxe Faux Mink Lashes in the style Lavish. For my final lip pairing, I went with the Luxe Lipstick shade in Bloom to Bloom. But I really do hope you guys enjoyed this final look. It is super extra, but I think for this collection, I just had to go back to this butterfly look. If you've been following me for a while, I did create something very similar a couple years ago. So it was nice to do like another take on it, do a different color scheme. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this final look. Alright you guys, so that completes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for being patient with me again with another ColourPop video. I really do feel like I'm falling behind. But if you guys did find this video helpful, be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much if you did. Also let me know what you guys think on this collection. What do you guys think about the new Pixi Puff Powder highlighting thing? Let me know how you guys feel about it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!